Frank Paris here. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people on uh, Facebook know me as a magician, <clears throat> and I am a magician. And um, I also manufacture props for magicians, and I've been building uh, different kinds of props for uh, a long time. Uh, <clears throat> I'm an engineer by trade, and I did that for a number of number of years. Uh, I was 30 to be exact, and then I. In 2001, I decided to go full blast, full term into uh, magic and magic building and performing and illusions and lectures and that kind of thing. And uh, and then I had, along the way, uh, developed certain passions. Uh, some of the passions that I developed was uh, science fiction. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, science fiction uh, props and, and, and science fiction movies and uh, my favorite science fiction is time travel. Uh, any kind of time travel. I mean, even if it's B and C kind of movie stuff, you know, we're so, uh, so uh, us sci-fi buffs are so hungry for good, good, good science fiction. Uh, and for me, it's always good, good science fiction uh, uh, sci-fi, uh, time travel. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, these science fiction episodes that are in Star Trek and these science fiction episodes that are in uh, uh, Picard and, and some of the other Star Trek properties and, and then also the, the science fiction um, that's in um, uh, some of the movies, okay, uh, like uh, Final Countdown with Kirk Douglas. So all of these science fiction time travel movies I I don't watch them over and over again but I do like once in a while to kind of look at them again and you know you, you watch a movie and you and you think maybe the ending will be a little different this time it's not always you know, it's always the same at the end uh, I just recently found a uh, <clears throat> excuse me I got a frog in my throat a director's cut of um, uh, final countdown and I found it on on Amazon and I quickly bought it because there were scenes in the final countdown, which um, were different to a certain extent. The, the, the dialogue was a little bit different. And uh, the, uh, the, the movie itself, when you watch a sci-fi movie uh, over a period of years, more than once, twice, maybe three times, you kind of, your brain plays, plays back what you're watching real quick. Whereas with this sci-fi director's cut for Final Countdown, my brain slowed down because now I'm watching something that's different from what I'm normally seeing. And there were scenes that were a little different. <clears throat> you had to look real close. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I got this frog. And uh, there, were, there were scenes that were real close to the original, uh, but uh, they were a little different. And it was exciting to watch because you know, you're watching... Uh, any kind of movie that you you see that's a little bit different because they show you something different in a director's cut or they show you something different somewhere else in the movie it's exciting because you've seen the movie you know i mean if you take a movie like uh, um contact with jody foster okay that movie is i wish there was a director's cut or some kind of a a, a, a cut a, a, a movie part of that movie that had been not put in the original movie or something like that. They get people to buy movies when they say director's cuts, never before scenes. I mean, I'm the first guy uh, at Amazon buying that. You know, I'm the first guy who who wants to see that. Uh, I may never watch it again. I may just throw it in a drawer or something. But I, I want to see that. I want to see what's different. How it might have been had I seen it the first time that way. So I mean, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent. I'm really here to talk about. Uh, uh, a model that I that I uh, that I have that I have sold a number of times and which is and I'm finishing up one now uh, by the end of um, it's uh, it's uh, the end of June 2022 We're getting close to the end of June 2022 and I'm going to have one finished at the end of July 2022 and the end of August 2022. And then I may take a break from it. But the model that I'm talking about is from the movie, the 1960 movie, The Time Machine, with Rod Taylor and Yvette Mimo and Sebastian Cabot and a few other things. Now, the interesting part about this movie 
is that the model was built <clears throat> by a fellow named Wa Chang, W-A-H Chang, Wa Chang. And a fellow named uh, LeBaron did some wiring in there, and the wiring had to do with a uh, uh, an LED light. Now we're talking about 1960, so the LED lights in 1960 weren't the greatest technology in the world. Uh, and there was one light that flashed on and off and on and off. <clears throat> uh, in the bigger model, uh, which was the one that, in if you watch the movie The Time Machine, he went to the future in, okay? That had flashing lights on the front panel. But the little tiny one was... Uh, I didn't have that. And this fellow named LeBaron, uh, uh, Paul LeBaron, I think it was his first name, Paul. Paul LeBaron, in conjunction with, <clears throat> boy, this is really getting, uh, in conjunction with, uh, in uh, collaboration with Wa Chang, uh, that's W-A-H-C-H-A-N-G, W-A-H-C-H-I-N-G, I think. Wa Chang, uh, uh, the two of them worked together on this little model, which was used in, I think, the third scenes of the movie. It's I call it the living room scene. And Wa Chang went on to uh, work uh, <clears throat> on Star Trek, building tricorders and phases, communicators, and that kind of thing. <clears throat> and LeBaron, from what I understand, went on to Outer Limits. And uh, he wound up, uh, his famous... Uh, thing with the Outer Limits was uh, the, the Xanti Misfits. He built those little Xanti Misfits, the things that scared my wife and me when we were little kids. These little creatures that had these giant eyes that were aliens coming from another planet. So so that's a little bit of the history behind, the, behind those two guys. But uh, what I want to show you is my favorite prop and the one that I, I build one for myself, and I put it up for sale, and it's not myself anymore. It belongs to somebody else. So I never really have one in my possession for very long. And here it is. This is the time machine. And I'm gonna show you. it comes with a tanless box, by the way. The tanless box is this nice, beautiful box, which opens up. I'm not going to open up the other side because it's... Uh, Got some props, some magic props in the way, but you can see that it opens up and it's beautifully hinged, and the material inside is first class. And this is the time machine right here. I'm going to bring this out. Now this is to scale. Okay, this is to scale. What you see here is exactly the same size as it was in the movie <clears throat> when Rod Taylor. Uh, takes it out of the tantalus box. That's called a tantalus box. Actually, the, the, the story that I heard about the tantalus box was that the, uh, the prop department didn't know what to put the time machine in, the model. So somebody ran back backstage and grabbed a, uh, a, a, liquor, a liquor box, a box that holds liquor. And uh, they uh, decided to padded inside because when you look at a tantalus box up on eBay or on on Google or something it's a liquor it's a liquor cabinet and you open it up and you like this and you've got little tiny bottles and not tiny bottles uh, uh, um, a decanter and some little um, little shot glasses and things in there and it doesn't look anything like this and what they did was they cleaned it out and they painted it and they put a nice well it had a design on it already but they i guess they stripped it down and redid the design and everything else and cleaned it up for the movie then they put this nice padding in here and uh those were those were manufactured and uh, you know back in the uh, the french uh, the french used to make these tantalus boxes back in the uh, 1800 1900 uh, uh years uh, from the 1800s to the 1900s and there are a few early 20th century tantalus boxes, but at this point in life, uh, uh, using one of those things is expensive. They're two, three thousand dollars a piece, and some of them, if not most of them, are in really bad shape. So, uh, to get back to the time machine, this is the model. It's a 5.5 scale. That's exactly the same size as it was in the movie. And the box, uh, the box itself, uh, obviously, is a reproduction of the box. And obviously, this is a, a reproduction also. It's a replica. But uh, you try to stay as true to form as possible when you make these things. And uh, this is what it looked like, essentially, 
uh, on the, and I have a very old photograph, which I'm going to post with this time machine uh, and uh, some other pictures, and you will see a, an original time machine model like you see here, only stripped down and in black and white. And uh, this design was a little bit different. That's the original time machine that was used in the movie. Unfortunately, what happened, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the original time machine's small model, that was used in the movie. Unfortunately, what happened was George Powell, who was the the maker of the movie, uh, had his that particular time machine on his mantle place a, 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 in his home in California, and there was a fire, and the whole bill, his whole house burnt down. And when his house burnt down, the time machine, the original one that was used in the movie, went with it. So that it was lost to uh, you know to to, to the people who really were big fans of that movie and who were also modelers who liked that that particular model and of course to George Powell too. Uh, it was a great loss to him. Uh, so what I've done over the years is I've kind of decided that I am going to come out with this model which is close very close to the model that you saw in that black and white picture except that I've added a few uh, things. First of all, it's in color, okay? And I'm filming you in 4K color right now on, a, on an AI um, uh, camera. So I can go up like this, and I can go down, and the camera will follow me. And I don't have to pay anybody to do that. I've got my AI camera. And if anybody who's interested, it's called an OBSBOT tail. I don't think you're going to be able to get one of them. But they do have OBSBOT uh, uh cameras that you can buy. This is a, one of the original Lobspot tails, and I just love it to death. Anyway, it does the job, and that's what counts. So this time machine, okay, comes with a little crystal, which I've just taken off the mantle. It's a little crystal handle. I'll hold that over to the camera here so you can see it. A little crystal handle, a little handle here. And this is what activates the time machine. So you just put that onto the time machine mechanism here, and it's not that easy, especially when you're not wearing your reading glasses. Let's see, just give me a little patience, audience, and we'll get it on in a second, I'm sure. There we go. So, and then we get a little box here, which opens and closes. Get this open and close. I think this is harder to make than the, than the damn time machine. So that's the box it comes in, all right? And um, ground up, from the ground up, from the base to the brass railings to the felted chair and the wooden chair, everything here is handmade. There are no computer 3D generator parts. It's painstakingly made and they take about they were taking three months but now i'm down to trying to get one out every month okay because the demand has gone way up for this but this again if you are a a model collector and if you are a working model collector and i'm not talking about going back in time i'm talking about lights and spinning discs and that kind of thing because i'll get people who come over to me and say hey does it really work yeah, well, if it did, I'd go back about uh, 30 years and fix all the damn mistakes I made growing up, or 40 years going back up. Okay, so it doesn't really work. And, of course, I don't have a full-size model. I know people who do, but I don't own a full-size model. This is the model I have. And now, without any further ado, I'm going to turn the machine on so you can see how it works. Now, this is really... Yeah, the motor that I use in these time machine bills are silent, okay? I've got a microphone on me. You can hear me. You don't hear this motor, all right? In fact, you don't even see the motor. I'm going to hold this up to the camera so you can see it. Very gingerly, I'm going to handle it because it's not that easy to... <clears throat> hold 
so you can see the camera. I'm going to stay in the picture too, <clears throat> as ugly as I am, <clears throat> because uh, the camera is following me. It's not following the time machine. So this is the time machine close up. Here's the back. You can see the front, like so. And if you look, even the panel has the date, okay? Has the dates, uh, decals and things on them. So that is the guy. This is the reproduction of the 1916 model, working model of the time machine. Okay, and of course I'll turn it off. If you are a model collector, even if you're not a model collector, I'm a magician by trade now. I've been a professional magician now for 55 years. Maybe. I started when I was 15. I'm going to be 75 in July, July 11th of this year. Do the math. Uh, and I, I, uh, magic has always been the top priority of my life. I've had a number of different businesses. I've had a number of uh, different nine to five professions uh, as an engineer, but the model building and the magic, and uh, I also restore automata, which is mechanical uh, clockwork type uh, animated figures. Uh, from the Victorian era and also from uh, early the early uh, 20th century and uh, some of the old stuff from the 1950s chirping birds and things like that but uh, <coughs> the one thing <coughs> that's for uh, here we go again <coughs> uh, the one thing that's foremost always been a really really uh, passion of mine is things like this Okay, animated things, animatronic things. And we've got a robot back here. Oop, I just almost knocked my robot down. Sorry, gang. This is this is um, Sprocket. I used to take him out to uh, do uh, trade shows and things like that. And this is home a uh, homemade built robot. I've had robots that I've sold that were fabricated for me for customers, but uh, who wanted to get in the robot business. But this guy right here, okay, was on Brain Games season. Four, episode two, I think, on language, okay, and uh, so um, uh, I'm always uh, I'm always looking to build something that's electronic or uh, restore something that's uh, a piece of automata or mechanical kind of thing, and this is one of my favorite props right here, and I have gotten so many compliments, and thank you all out there in Facebook land and. Facebook land and, and um, YouTube land for uh, complimenting me on this particular item. Um, and there are a number of people that are satisfied with, more than satisfied with this in their collection. So um, just, uh, the thing is, I put these things up and I never have one for myself, as I mentioned before. Um, they come, you know, I said, well, gee, I've got one here, I've got a space for it and everything else. And, you know, it goes back in the box, you know, we can put it back in the box for you. So you can see how nicely it fits in there. And there it is back in the box, along with the little crystal box. And we'll just close this up, like so. All right, so that's all, all set now. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's in its little home. And uh, uh, the problem is I never have one for long. It's, you know, this one's sold already. And I'm, I got one coming out. It's June, June 23rd today, I think, 2022. And I am going to be um, finishing another one up, uh, July 1st. So I got one more. This one is sold, as sold as I said, and that's going to be shipping uh, on July 6th. I just want to have it here for a little while. You know, because I want to, I, I kind of want to look at it and enjoy it. And then the second one hasn't sold yet, and that'll replace this first one, and then 
and on and on and on. So I have one now, which is sold. I have one coming out in Ju July 1st, which is not sold yet. I've got some interested people on Facebook. And then I have one August. And then I'm going to take a break. All right. So um, that's it, folks. Frank Paris, as they say, as I say all the time, Frank Paris over and out. And thank you for watching.